Hello. In this video, we're going to create a filtering policy. This is how we define what DNS filter allows or blocks on your network. And it includes content categories, safe search settings, threats, and sites which you wish to whitelist or blacklist. Let's dive in. We'll navigate in the dashboard to policies and filtering. From there, I'm going to click add. I'll be given a chance here to name my policy. I'm going to call this work policy. Hit save. I'm now going to go through the various tabs and configure all of the options of my policy. So first, on the categories tab, I'm going to select a few categories that I want to block. As soon as I click them, they will turn red and have a universal forbidden icon. This means these categories will be blocked by the policy. Anything that's grayed out will be allowed. Now I'm going to go over to the Safe Search tab. This tab gives me the ability to moderate content on top search engines as well as on YouTube. I'm going to go ahead and for YouTube select a moderate setting. The next tab is the Threats tab. I'm going to select all of these. We have a new category here, which is new domains. This covers domains which have been registered in the last 30 days. Since malware and phishing scammers often register a new domain and launch their attack and leave, this helps you to stay ahead of their activities, preventing domains which may be used by attackers in the future. I'm now going to add a few things to my whitelist and blacklist. These pages also allow for uploading a CSV file. So if you want to do that, you can simply make a text file and add one domain per line and upload that file and it will be recognized uh, in this system. I'm going to add a few domains such as Microsoft.com and AOL.com just for an example. The best way to enter domains here is to enter the fully qualified domain name. Don't enter IP addresses because they can change, and don't enter URLs. If you enter the base domain name, it will also cover subdomains. For example, instead of ftp.microsoft.com, I could simply type in microsoft.com, and it would also allow microsoft.com and all subdomains. The same thing is true of the blacklist. I'm going to go and add ESPN.com here. Now onto the Advanced tab. There are two sub-tabs here. The first is for NAT IPs. This allows you to set alternate DNS servers for some of your machines on your network. Accordingly, you can have multiple policies for a single network location. Unfortunately, this doesn't work in an Active Directory environment due to limitations of how domain controllers do forwarding. But in many other environments, this will work. You can read more about this feature in our help documentation. The last tab here is Extra Settings. These are experimental settings which we commonly advise leaving alone if you're on a production network, unless you're very adventurous. This is another area best covered by our help documentation, but the basic rule of thumb here is that turning these settings on can disrupt the experience of your users. For instance, blocking unknown sites will block sites that haven't yet been categorized. Because the internet is a very big place, this still covers many sites that you may need to have access to. You'll also notice on this page that Internet Watch Foundation filtering is active. This is our partnership with IWF to combat child pornography in all its forms, and it's turned on permanently for all customers. I can now click Save. And once I've done that, I can go to my deployment section and assign this policy to my network. My site will now be filtered according to this policy. Changes take place instantaneously on our servers, but if users already have accessed these sites, they'll be stored in their browser cache for a period of time. This is usually about 15 minutes, but could be longer. If after an hour you still don't see any changes on these computers, you can visit debug.dnsfilter.com to verify your policy and reach out to support if you have any issues. Thank you for watching.